What is going on y'all? Geo Fuck Side Perspectives here. And in today's video, I just wanted to make this video because I keep seeing the conversation. I've made videos about it before. Um, but if you don't know, now you know. So in this video, I just want to talk about the importance of... Can you see it? The SCOVI! Okay? Or... If you can't get the SCOVI and you're still doing Travada or you're doing the um, generic version of Travada, which is this right here. You got options. I'm a strong believer in PREP. P-R-E-P, capital P, lowercase r, capital E, capital P. PREP, okay? pre-exposure prophylaxis one daily pill okay now if you're doing discovy discovy um has less side effects less risk as it pertains to your kidneys as well as it pertains to like your bone density and things of that nature and it's also a smaller pill so just to show you what it looks like it is a much smaller pill this is what the SCOVI looks like. Okay, it is a very much smaller pill in comparison to what Travada or the generic version of Travada looks like. So let me show you what the, what the generic version of Travada looks like. So this is Travada, the generic version. Okay, in comparison to the SCOBY. I mean, significantly, this is basically double the size of the SCOBY. So off rip, this the SCOBY is winning. Not to mention it has less side effects. But uh, one daily pill a day can help you uh, prevent, can help prevent you from contracting HIV, Okay. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this and I've made videos before about this matter of fact, let, 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 so you can see me doing it, you know, just one daily pill. <sighs> one daily pill y'all can help, um, you avoid from contracting HIV. The reason I'm talking about this is because there's so much talk around it. Number one, people have this assumption still, even though it is 2024, nearly 2025, people still have this assumption that HIV only is an issue for the gay community, in particular, cis gay males. Here's the thing. HIV doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care about your sexuality. It doesn't care about your gender or your gender identity, your gender expression. It doesn't care if you're monogamous or non-monogamous. It doesn't care if you're in a committed relationship or single. It doesn't care if you're non-monogamous. It doesn't care if you're cisgender, trans, intersex. It doesn't care if you're gay, heterosexual, bisexual, pansexual. None of those things matter. Because any body can get HIV. HIV doesn't discriminate. Now, the reason I'm making this video, too, is to highlight why more cishet women and more cis women in general need to consider being on PrEP. Number one, if it hasn't rang the bell yet, especially for cishet women who are dealing with cis men, um, people cheat. People lie. Just because you're monogamous doesn't mean he's monogamous. Just because you're in a committed relationship with him doesn't mean he's in a committed relationship with you. I'm just going to keep it a buck, okay? Not to mention that the same men that a lot of you cishet women are attracted to are also the same men that are messing around with other men, that are messing around with other people. Okay, trans women, trans men, trans masculine, intersex, cis women, cishet women, cis men, trans men. These men are literally the same demographic that's messing with everybody. So it's in everybody's best interest, including the cis man, to be on prep. Okay, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'm just going to keep it real. 
a lot of y'all get on here to tell us all the time about, oh, he's the love of my life and we've been together for 10 years and yet you're the one at the clinic burning, okay? Because at the end of the day, I don't care. It is 2024. You cannot trust people. I am so sick and tired of us trying to act like when we speak on these things, oh, you're being negative. Everyone's not sleeping around. Everyone's not cheating. Mm -hmm. All of this is, this can be very true, but it's enough people that are sleeping around and cheating that HIV is still impacting people's day-to-day -day lives. We still have high rates of STIs and STDs. So again, I would rather err on the side of caution than to be thinking that everything's good and then I go and get a test and surprise, 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 I have something that I can't get rid of, okay? So again, err on the side of caution and I'm gonna keep on saying it. When you're dealing with cis men, it's in your best interest to err on the side of caution. We're literally talking about a demographic that has little to no sexual discipline, okay? And when you're being socialized to think that everything's about sleeping around and sticking your penis in any and everything that walks and not having any real discipline or, and let's just keep it real, lacking self-respect for yourself and thinking everything is a joke and, oh, I can't get pregnant so I can just go out here and sleep around. If that's going to be your mindset, you're putting yourself and everybody that you deal with at risk for contracting sexually transmitted infections and diseases. Okay. So it's in your best interest. Okay. Prep literally they've made it so easy. Now it's one daily pill, not to mention there's other options where you can get a shot. That's right. An injection every two to three months and not even have to take a day to day pill. Okay. I'm just saying, And granted, yes, you can still practice safe sex. You can still use condoms. I recommend that you still use condoms and other uh, forms of contraceptive. You can also use spermicide. Um, you can also abstain from sex. Some people are celibate. Some people are abstaining completely. There's people who are still using the pullout method, which arguably is not a good idea because there's a thing called pre-cum and guess what? You can still contract unwanted kids and STIs and STDs with pre-cum. So yeah, the point is you've got vaginal secretions, penal, penile secretions, you've got blood, you've got breast milk. There's so many ways that HIV and other STIs, STDs can be transmitted from person to person, okay? Again, it's all about being safe. And also nowadays, um, if you have healthcare insurance, it's likely gonna be covered. Um, I don't have to pay anything out of pocket with my healthcare insurance through my employer for my medication. I'm very thankful for that. Not to mention, if you're on Medicaid, Medicare, a lot of times your PrEP will also be covered completely and you won't have to come out of pocket for that either. And that's with you being on a state, federal healthcare plan, okay? Also, when you're on PrEP, it also helps to promote safe sex because you literally are supposed to get tested every three months. Okay, every 90 days, you should be getting a full panel sexually transmitted disease, sexually transmitted infection test. It's a full panel, so you're getting all tests. That's urine sample, that's blood samples. Not to mention, you should also ask to get both an oral, anal, and or vaginal swab because let's be real, some STIs and STDs are not going to be seen via urine sample or blood sample. We will need to do a swab and that swab would come from your mouth, your anus or your vaginal area since that's where the penetration is typically going to be at. And it's important that you ask for the anal swab, vaginal swab, oral swab, okay? Because a lot of times when you're doing a full panel, they won't even bother with the swab, which is really kind of dumb when you sit down and think about it because a lot of people are engaging in sex anally, vaginally, and orally. 
And let's be honest, if we want to have a comprehensive look and to, and to really know for a fact, for certain that you don't have anything, we need to do the swab with the full panel at least once every three months. Now, of course, there are people who are going to constantly argue back and forth with, oh, I'm in a committed relationship. He would never cheat on me. She would never cheat on me. They would never cheat on me. And here's the thing. Never say never, because again, none of us are with our partners 100%, 24-7, 365. We never know what each one is doing. You know, it's nice to think that somebody would be honest and not do those things. But as we can see throughout history and current times, people aren't really honest. Not to mention, I'm just going to call a thing a thing. A lot of cis men are socialized to be liars and manipulators. Literally, they think omitting the omitting key details is okay when in reality that's still lying so i'm just gonna call a thing a thing it's best for you to take your own health into consideration instead of putting your health in somebody else's hands because again people do what they want to do behind your back and in front of you it really doesn't matter that's why it's in your best interest to care about yourself okay also um there's a lot of free clinics and nonprofit organizations. A lot of LGBTQ plus centers and healthcare uh, providers pr have free confidential STI, STD testing that you can get for free or very low costs. You can also bring your partner with you to get tested. I honestly encourage people to bring their significant other or their partners with them when they get tested. I've had the privilege of working as an early uh, prevention specialist. I've worked as a healthcare sexual education educator. I've done HIV testing. Um, I've been trained and licensed to do those things. And I'm here to tell you, I've seen enough to know. I don't, and, I'm not, and I don't feel bad about saying it. I don't trust anybody when it comes to my health. Because again, People, I have seen too many situations where folks have been in, people have been married. Okay, let's just put a thing, a thing. People have literally been married and found out they had HIV because their partner stepped out on them. So again, you can sit up and do all this. This is my baby. That's my husband. That's my wife. That's my boo. And I'm here to tell you that has little to nothing to do with anything. A person can be married and cheat on you. A person can be single and cheat on you. Okay, it really doesn't matter. You need to get tested on a regular basis. I strongly, 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 strongly encourage people to get on PrEP. Um, now, there's also another little safe bit if you feel that you have come into contract with someone who may have HIV and you're not 100% sure, you have up to 72 hours from that contact to take PEP. And Mercy, stop. PEP is another amazing breakthrough. Um, PEP is post-exposure prophylaxis. So this is after you think you may have come in contact with someone who is HIV positive. You can take PEP within 72 hours and it will drastically reduce the likelihood of you contracting HIV. Okay. It's all look, I look at PEP like people look at plan B. Okay. Plan B, if you've had sex and you had unprotected sex or you think that you may have had a situation where you may be pregnant, you can take plan B within the uh, within 72 hours from that sexual intercourse and it can drastically reduce the likelihood of you becoming pregnant. So that's how I look at PEP. You take PEP within the last 72 hours of you potentially coming into contact with someone who's HIV positive and it can drastically reduce the likelihood of you becoming HIV positive, okay? I also want to put an emphasis on there are people living with HIV there, there there's somebody somebody you know somebody you're friends with somebody you work with somebody that you may be in love with or have a family member etc is probably living with HIV and here's the thing people living with HIV are living 
long, fulfilled lives. Our health care and our medical care and our medications have come leaps and bounds since the 80s, right? We're, you know, we're 40 years out, right? It has come leaps and bounds. Like there are already trials showing that we will have a cure for HIV. However, let's avoid contracting HIV altogether, right? Also, I also want to say you equals you, okay? And essentially what that means is someone who is HIV positive, if they are taking their medications the correct way and they're on, the, on a good regimen for them, they can become undetectable. And if a person becomes undetectable, they can't transmit HIV to anybody, so it's important that people with HIV have access to quality, affordable, accessible, and inclusive healthcare insurance so they can get on the right regimen, so they can become undetectable and therefore won't be able to transmit HIV to anybody else, all right? And then I also want to say, because uh, there's a lot of people, well, why would you, I hear this all the time, why would you want to have sex with someone who's HIV positive? Here's the thing. You don't know who's HIV positive and who's H and who doesn't have HIV. You can't look at a person and tell. Also, there are people with HIV that are having sex. They deserve to have sex lives just as much as you. I'm just going to be honest, and this is another reason why everyone should be on prep. Okay? Like you know, we should be using condoms. We should be doing what we can uh, to avoid transmitting STIs, STDs, and to avoid contracting STIs, STDs, okay? We can look out for ourselves and each other in the process. And like I said, people with HIV, people living with HIV are having sex just as much as people without HIV. And again, somebody having HIV doesn't mean that they are nasty or they are less than. It just means that they have an autoimmune disease. And now, with, if they're on the proper uh, medication regimen and they're also, you know, eating right and drinking enough water and getting enough rest, which all of us need to be doing regardless if you have HIV or not, you can live a long, fulfilling, healthy life. But my point in this video is just to let people know you have options. You have options. Okay? This is not the dark ages. It is 2024. Quite frankly, it makes no sense that people are still contracting HIV. It just doesn't make sense. Okay? And this is where I feel like in our own community, not just the LGBTQ plus community, but human beings who are sexually active in general. We need to do better at educating and informing each other of the options available to us. We also, in my opinion, need to do a better job at advocating for universal health care across the board. So everybody, regardless of income, race, ethnicity, sexuality, gender, etc., has access to health care. OK, and what is they used to say, an ounce, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure, something like that. The point is, if we can be, um, if we could be proactive and, you know, step ahead right away to avoid a lot of things, we could be doing a lot better for our communities and for the world at large. And I just, I can't, I've been knowing about PrEP personally since 2015. Um, and really prep came out in like 2011, 2012. So I was already three to four years behind when I first heard about it. And mind you, in 2015, I wasn't even having sex. So, but I was doing the work. You know what I'm saying? I was an HIV prevention specialist, early prevention specialist. I was helping people navigate the healthcare system if they contracted HIV and needed to get on treatment plans and, and get in with infectious disease nurses, doctors, and, and medical providers. I've been doing this for nine years. So again, this is why I'm very big on sexual education, sexual health. And I'm also, and you know me as an intersex trans person, it's really important because our population is disproportionately hit with HIV, okay? And a lot of this is because, let's just keep it real, a lot of us are doing sex work and we and we don't have the proper uh, preventative protections in place 
while we're doing that type of work. And then also, let's just keep it a buck. In the LGBTQ plus community, there is a big emphasis on sex. And this isn't to say that cishet people aren't out here getting it in because baby, obviously they are. How did we get here? Most of us got here because a cishet person decided to have unprotected sex or ended up pregnant without their consent. Let's just keep it a buck. Let's just keep it a buck. So obviously cishet people are getting it in just as much as us Rainbow Mafia gang members are, okay? We're all doing things. But the point is, you can be safe. You can be protective. You can look out for yourself and you can look out for others, okay? And um, and I know y'all are like, but you're always talking about the cis men. Well, look, here's the reason why I talk about it. Because if we're gonna look at it from a scientific uh, level, anuses are not penetrating themselves. Vaginas are not penetrating themselves. Mouths are not penetrating themselves. It's typically someone with a penis that's doing the penetration. So again, the sperm comes to the egg. The egg doesn't come to the sperm, okay? So again, it's somebody with a penis that's getting somebody pregnant. It's somebody with a penis bringing the STI, STD into the, into the fix. It's not the other way around. And I'm so sick and tired of us trying to act like because I hear so many in the community, well, you know, if, if you a top, if you a top, you don't have to worry. Meanwhile, y'all are the main ones carrying the damn STIs and STDs to people. Okay. And on top of that, the same way you don't want a bottom that's for the streets, a lot of people don't want tops that are for the streets. At the, at the end of the day, if you're not protecting yourself, you're not getting tested, you're just out here sticking your thing in any and everything, or you're just letting any and everything stick themselves inside of you, you're putting yourself at risk. Okay? And I hate to break it to you. Like I said earlier, you could be monogamous all day. That doesn't mean the other person is. Not to mention somebody, and this is happening a lot with people with penises, they don't even know that they have stuff because they don't get tested on a regular basis. A lot of cis men don't go to the doctor, okay? This is why y'all sitting up here finding out later down the road that you've been carrying STIs and STDs for years. Many times they'll lay dormant and they'll be carrying that STI, STI for years and not even know. And... They might have contracted it in 2020. It's 2024 and they just started dating you six months ago. So a lot of times people don't even know that they have something, which is another reason why all of this misogynistic patriarchal lens on on well, women should be, you know, uh, sh shouldn't have sex and should be mindful and should wait to preg or wait to uh to be married or the bottom shouldn't be out here doing this meanwhile cis men can just do whatever the hell they want to do tops can just do whatever the hell they want to do these are the double standards that are keeping a lot of our people sick okay i'm just going to be honest at the end of the day whether you got 10 partners or one partner you need to take precautions it is what it is. Whether you have a penis, a vagina, a anus, whether you're a bottom, a verse, a side, a top, straight, gay, cis, intersex, trans, black, white, Asian, Puerto Rican, doesn't matter. You need to take precautions to protect yourself and to protect the people that you claim to love and care about. And notice I said claim because arguably... In my opinion, you ain't loving that person that much if you're willing to give them an STI, STD. Okay? You ain't, you ain't caring about them that much if, if you're okay with them catching something. Okay? I'm just being real. I just, I'm kind of tired of us and the fakeness that we like to portray on social media. Okay? Because, again, very... <sighs> actions don't be matching words. That's all I'm going to say. Y'all love and care about a person, but you're lying and cheating on them. You love and care about a person, but you're bringing them deadly STIs and STDs. That ain't that much love and care in the world. If you're gonna, if you're gonna put somebody in, at risk, okay? You, you don't care that much about that person. Stop, stop faking the phone, okay? Stop faking the phone. But anyways, that's today's video. Prep, pre-exposure prophylaxis. Pep, post-exposure prophylaxis. All right. Get tested at least once every three months. 
Now, if you're not really sexually active and you don't really have sex, you can get away with getting tested once or twice a year. However, the more active you are sexually, the likelihood that you need to be getting tested more regularly. Some people low key need to be getting tested every 30 days because they are literally having sex that much and with multiple different people. OK, others, they can get away with once or twice a year because they not they don't really have sex. OK, but on the bare minimum, every 90 days, OK, every 12 weeks, every three months, you should consider getting a full panel STI, STD test, blood and urine samples, as well as asking. Don't forget to ask for that swab. OK, if you have anal sex, get a swab. If you have oral sex, get a swab. If you have vaginal sex, get a swab. If you do all three, get three swabs, okay? Because it's about making sure you know what your status is. And the sooner you know, the better. Because say if you do find out that you did contract an STI or an STD, you can start treatment right away versus like a lot of people do, they don't know and they've had it for years or it's laid dormant for years. And by the time they find out they have something, it's in dire situation because it's been literally in your body, destroying your body for years. Okay, there's a lot of people who are walking around with chlamydia and gonorrhea and have no idea. And then there's just a lot of people who don't know what the symptoms are. So like you have people who just think, oh, well, I've always had that. And it's like, well, that's not normal for you to have that discharge all the time and for it to be that color and for it to have that stinky scent. Some people honestly don't know because, again, in the USA, especially, we don't really talk about comprehensive sexual health, let alone sexual health education. So there's a lot of people walking around who have no idea anything about their body parts. They don't. But they're just out here all willy nilly. And like I said, it's a lot of you cis males that are literally a walking Petri dish. I'm just going to be honest. Um, again, so many dudes don't don't even know how to book their own doctor's appointments. Still depending on mommy and daddy and their significant others to literally book their doctor's appointments. So you can't really be too surprised that he doesn't know what's going on. And a lot of people who are having sex with these same men are constantly finding themselves at the clinic, even though they're in a committed monogamous relationship because he is not in a committed monogamous relationship. Like I said, actions and words are not really matching here and people are ending up paying the ultimate price because of that. So I'm gonna keep making videos where I discuss this. I've made videos before talking about prep. I've been personally taking prep now for four years, okay? I started July of 2020. I was not playing. When I came out, came out the closet and started having sex and doing stuff, I was already aware. Thank God that's a privilege and a blessing in of itself. Um, so I knew to go on and get on prep and do what I needed to do to have that because I wanted to be safe, not sorry. But there's a lot of people who don't know, y'all. So if we can share this information and we can help other people, do it. And again, cishet women, black cishet women numbers when it comes to HIV is steadily increasing. And again, just because you're monogamous doesn't mean he's monogamous. Just because you're straight doesn't mean he's straight. Okay, I'm just going to keep it real. This is why a lot of you who sit up and talk about how you don't date bi men, you've already dated bi men. I can almost guarantee you that. Because nine times out of ten, he was lying about his sexuality and or he didn't feel comfortable to tell you his sexuality because a lot of you are biphobic. It just needs to be said. You're homophobic and biphobic. And granted, it still doesn't give him the right to lie to you because again, it's supposed to be about bodily autonomy. And when you're lying and omitting key details, you're taking away bodily autonomy from other people and that is not okay. And at the same time, as long as we have homophobia, biphobia and transphobia, you're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna be omitting key facts about themselves and just straight up not telling you the truth, okay? So it's in your best interest to protect yourself. This is why I'm going to keep saying it. Cis, het, cis women, you need to get on prep.
okay? You just do. A lot of y'all are sitting up here c contracting HIV because you're putting all of your trust into somebody else. And that is not a good thing to do. Not in 2024 and not moving forward. I'm out.